it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Ino Corey, founder of Meta Developer, and she is here doing introductions uh, for for the speakers for several of the presentations. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, so, your relationship with with uh, GoToConf, how did you end up coming here and doing these introductions and and the uh, the opening warm up for for these speakers? Well, there was a long way leading to that. So it all started in uh, in Denmark, in okay. the little kingdom of in the northern Europe, where there was a company called the Trifork who mm -hmm. wanted to go to a lot of conferences in the U.S. to see a lot of the great speakers, but they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So what they decided to do instead was to create their own conference in Denmark. Right. So it started there in Denmark in uh, '96, and in '98 it had grown to become a bit larger. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, I just started my PhD in computer science, and I was working with programming languages and design patterns and mm -hmm. the correspondence between those two. And they invited me as a PhD student in their PhD track to talk about what I was going to do, what I was planning mm -hmm. to do. Uh, so, I came so you in, came in as a presenter? Yes, that was sure. the way I started. I was okay. yeah in a special track for a PhD student, mm -hmm. so not, not in the tracks where we have Martin Fowler and mm -hmm. Jess Humble, and, but it was the real stuff. <laughs> no, not like that. I mean, <laughs> not that I was not a professional speaker at that mm -hmm. time. Um, so I presumably wasn't a very good speaker at that time. Anyway, so uh, I finished my PhD and I started doing teaching at university and also in the industry at Trifork. And then they offered me a job after my PhD. Mm -hmm. So I started working for them in 2001. And uh, one of my first tasks was to do a tutorial about uh, software architecture for, for the conference and also to help out um, inviting some of the speakers. Mm -hmm. So over the years I've been working on and off with Trifog and University but all the time I've been helping out with the conference in Denmark inviting mm -hmm. speakers and now I've become the PC chair for many of the of the conferences that we do because now it's not only in Denmark it's in um, here in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also involved in a YAO conference in Australia, QCon London. So you're all over. Go to Berlin, Amsterdam. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of lot of flying. It's a lot of flying. Yes, but it's very interesting to be part of the program committee because mm -hmm. you you get the chance to to spend some time on looking at what are the trends and see a lot of talks mm -hmm. and who are the good speakers who could talk about this, talk about that. So preferably, of course, we want speakers who's done something special so that mm -hmm. their name is well known or, or the brand at least is well known, but also that they're really, really good speakers, entertaining and can right. make people listen to what they're saying. And actually also on the third part, we'd like them to be great people to be around because mm -hmm. we like our conferences to be a cozy area. Social. Yeah, social, where the participants and the speakers can communicate with each other. And that's also why we do not have a speaker room. We do not want to hide them away from right. the participants. Yeah, so the idea is that everybody's out and mingling and meeting. And yeah, exactly. But to do the presentations, you said you started off as a PhD uh, did you say you were a student when you first came? Yeah. Yeah. So when you were a PhD student doing a presentation, now you're doing warm ups for, yeah. for, and introducing, which, as you described, you want people that are friendly. Well, you, you kind of want somebody that's going to be a little bit funny to do warm ups. How did you go from being this uncomfortable person, maybe a little bit doing their first talk, to now loving to be on stage? Yeah, loving yeah. to be on stage <laughs> and, and having a little bit of a performance. And, yeah. I don't know, it came uh, a little after little. I remember the first really big presentation I gave was uh, at the Uppsala conference in 98. Mm -hmm. It was one of the papers I had accepted. And uh, I was so nervous. And I I rehearsed it so many times. But now I, it, it's more natural to me. I know basically what I want to say. And then when I get on stage, I sometimes say something completely different. But I just enjoy being yeah. there. So no, it's... Practice. Were you always somebody that liked me on stage? Did you do any drama or anything when you were in school? No. no? Just once you got bit by the bug? Yes. It, it was. I've always been a shy child. Never wanted to have any attention when I was a child. And now I love it. And, you know, actually, it's interesting. I talked with uh, some people who, when they go on the stage, they're very gregarious and, and open. Uh, kind of like a, a Bob Martin, Uncle Bob. Uh, and then when they're off stage, they're a little bit more reserved and, and, and soft-spoken. Or yeah. maybe not necessarily soft, soft Martin. No, no. <laughs> but but still, the, the point is is that when you get on a stage, they're able to put on a persona, yes. and then when they come back, they're able to be themselves again. Yeah. Is that something you do, or do you feel a lot more like 
your 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 personality on stage is is the same as off stage, or is it melded? No, I definitely think that there is a change. That's also why sometimes I don't really know what I'm going to say when I'm on stage mm-hmm. because I sort of change into somebody who wants to be there and have attention. And when I come down from the stage again, I'm just myself. Yeah, does it, does it feel like kind of exhilarating or a little bit uh, like oh that was depleting? No, I'm high <laughs> about an hour after I've been on stage, yeah. and then I deflate. And then it's, oh, that yeah. is tiring. Yes. Right. I, I think I use a lot of energy on it. Okay. And um, so the presentation is here at GoToConf. Uh, which, 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 who were you introducing? So in the morning introductions, I just share with Dave Thomas. Mm-hmm. I introduce half of them, and he introduces the other half of them. And now I'm track hosting also for some of the uh, sessions. Like mm-hmm. this afternoon, I'm track hosting for, for instance, Greg, Greg Young. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, I was track hosting for Michael Nygaard and Randy Shoup and Jess Humble. So, but what is what is track hosting? Oh, that means that you are hosting um, a track in a room. So okay. all the speakers that are coming there are sort of your responsibility. You need to make sure that they're there. Mm-hmm. You need to introduce them so they know when to start talking, and you need to help them stop talking when, <laughs> when they yeah. stop talking. And you get their slides for the website. So that's so it's a little bit of an MC kind of. It is so MC. I know. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And, oh, actually, you know what? I do want to ask one more thing. Okay. Is there uh, for somebody who's looking at, at presenting and maybe coming to their first big conference? Because you've experienced going from coming into a big conference. Is there any particular advice or, or any thoughts you might think of that uh, they might not be prepared for or maybe are overly prepared for? Anything that... You know, when you do you mean when you are accepted to go? Or yeah, to like when you're going to go to a talk at a big conference that's, yeah. you know, 100, over, well over 100 people yeah. or, or a multi-day track, and it's, it's going to be a bigger conference... You know, there, there's what are maybe I'll, I'll split that into two questions. What are some things that they should be prepared for, and what, if anything, is that they might be thinking that they're used to mm-hmm. at a smaller venue that they okay that won't translate well into a larger venue. Okay, so it's a hard question. Yeah, but I could say that uh, one thing is that sometimes you get shocked by the number of people, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you get nervous and. The thing that really works for me is to rehearse at least the first three sentences so that I know them by heart, really by heart, just right. rehearsing, 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 so that even if I get very nervous when I get on stage, I sort of, I've got it down to mm-hmm. an automation. And once you've started talking, normally you forget how many people that are there. Yeah, so and, that, that first moment. Yeah, that first moment is very important. Of course, you should rehearse your whole presentation, mm-hmm. but that first moment is really important that you really say it out loud many mm-hmm. times. And also, if people are asking you a question from the audience, you have to remember to repeat the question, of course, so that right. everybody knows that you've understood the question correctly and right. everybody has heard the question. Right. So that would be one of the things. Okay. And then don't listen to all the bad criticism. <laughs> you get. Yeah, try to turn it off. A yeah. bit. Okay, well, now for real... Thank you very much. That was practice on the first time. Uh, Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. You're welcome. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugastic.com.